everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you about airbrushing, specifically airbrushing miniatures from start to finish. And this is part 10. How to pre-shade vehicles using an airbrush. Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you about airbrushing miniatures, and getting to know your airbrush, and having a good time doing it. I love airbrushing. I really hope you so far have been able to pick up your airbrushes and uh, paint along. And it's a lot of fun. As you can see, it saves a lot of time and it's a really fun tool to use. And today I will be teaching you how to use your airbrush to pre-shade, sorry, to pre-shade uh, large models and specifically vehicles. And so essentially is pre-shading, why do I call it pre-shading? Is because you're gonna take your airbrush and darken certain areas that you want them to be shaded in the recesses and, uh, and along edges and stuff and beneath and basically you can you can add the shading to it and then later on you can go over with a lighter coat a, light, a lighter color and the areas that you added the darker shading to will be of course darker than the tone of the rest of the model so essentially you pre-shaded the model as opposed to later where you have to go over with multiple colors over the same model with the, you know let's say if we're painting imperial this tank, you could go over with three shades of yellow, or you can pre-shade the model and then go over with a single coat of yellow. So it's up to you, but uh, either one's really fun. And uh, but I find pre-shading really do, does produce a more realistic gradient of colors in the end. So yeah, so let's get started. So first of all, key is when you're pre-shading your model is to start off with a mid-tone uh, primer. So I typically recommend mid tone grays as your primer when you're going to be pre-shading and pre-highlighting which we'll be covering in the next video. So then all we do is we can use primers. Like that's the cool thing about this step is that you can essentially use primers, you don't even need to use paints. So you just prime the model gray and then you can pre-shade using black and then pre-highlight using white. And that way you've created the gradients of colors already. And this, this particular um, method works very well when you're going over with a lighter color yellow uh, later. So like yellows are great, light reds, oranges, uh, basically colors that, that will really nicely pick up on these pre-shading and pre-highlighting. Uh, dark blues, really, really dark greens will not work as well. So please take that discretion when using uh, this particular method, but blues will still work very well. And most mid-tone reds will still work very well as well. So it will work for most color uh, sets that you want to use. Just take that in consideration that if you're using very, very dark colors, it will not work as well. But uh, yeah, so let's get started on the miniature. And of course, it should be noted, of course, that I will be using a glove and a mask while doing this airbrushing. Always protect your hands and your lungs when possible. Hey, so here we go. Um, so here is a gray, uh, really beaten up Land Raider that I've had in my possession for a long time. Bought it off a friend a while ago. And I have just primed it gray. As you can see, I used a mid-tone gray. I used the gray primer from Steinal Res, my favorite primer series to use with an airbrush. And now it's a mid-tone gray. It's just gray all around. So today we're gonna be using a black primer to prime around the details that we want to be shaded, such as the door edges in here, uh, underside of the tank. You know, we can under, we can use the black primer to pre-shade underneath, around, just anywhere you want to be shaded. In here, I usually just use the recesses along the edges, and the key is just to get anywhere you want. So in here and here, and uh, yeah, you can pre-shade as much or as little as you want. And I'll be doing that here, and then what you'll see when you over go over later with a nice color, it will erase most of the lines. So if you go a little bit thick over these areas, don't be, wor be too worried. When you go over with a color uh, later, it will um, it will go over it more. It will uh, erase that mostly and just be in the deep lines. So the pre shading will be there, and it will create this really nice uh, pre shaded and pre worn appearance. So as always, I will be using my Badger Patriot 105 just to show you what it can do. It is a nice generic airbrush and I will be using a uh, Steinal Res Black Primer to do this step. Now the key is you want to paint thin lines, as I mentioned. So you want to keep your airbrush very close to the surface and have good control because that way you can um, have very thin lines and just have nice clean lines. So this is a great exercise for clean thin lines 
and pre-shading. So let's go ahead. Now I'm just gonna put on my mask and the rest of the part will be music over because I don't want you guys just to hear the compressor. So I'm gonna put on my mask and we'll be good to start pre-shading this Land Raider. So now with my trusty Patriot 105 in my hand filled with black Steinal Res Primer, I'm gonna pre-shade the tank. So the key is when pre-shading is to hit the model from basically the, uh, you wanna hit it from a straight angle. So if you see a corner, you want to hit it from a, a angle per, basically straight on from that corner angle, not straight on from the vehicle. So as you can see, I'm holding it at a slight angle so that I can actually get the, the paint directly into that corner where the two parts meet. You want to line that up because later on when you're doing the base color, you're going to hit it from a straight on angle which will uh, not overlap a lot of the paint that you're putting directly into that recess. And that's essentially pre-shading. So once again, you just want to keep your airbrush close to the surface and pull back on the trigger just slightly and just with nice clean lines, put the black paint into wherever you want to appreciate. So I'm going to do around the doors, uh, the underside of the tank, and just, uh, yeah, wherever I want to appreciate. The key is I like to do when appreciating is focus on the recesses and whatever other, what areas of the model that the light source would not be hitting. So as you can see, I'm focusing on all the, the grooves along the underside of the Land Raider. And this is in uh, two and a half times motion. As, as you can see, I'm going the underside of the tank. I just wanted to speed it up a little bit because it's a very repetitive process, though it does create an amazing effect. It's just not the most fun to watch someone just do this in slow motion. So I said I'm focusing on most of the underside of the carriage, uh, all the area along the edging, the underside of the guns, basically just wherever you'd expect there to be shade on the tank. And in the end, you're going to get just a really exaggerated surface uh, after this step. And that's kind of what you're going for. And as I mentioned uh, before starting, when you're applying the base coat to this, the base coat will go over most of it and leave a lot of the, uh, it will remove a lot of the effect. That's why you can go a little bit thicker than desired. Um, it will be cleaned up later when you go with the base color. But as you can see, I'm just applying it to all the recesses, all the edges, and everywhere that should be shaded when the model is airbrushed. You can even do this along the tops of the tank parts, all, just to make the uh, the edging really stick out. Especially along the door of the uh, of the top part, the latch. And now I'm just applying it to the back, all the vents. And once again, you can go straight pretty much down. And when you're applying a base coat, as long as you're applying it from more of a straight angle, uh, like a flat angle when applying the base coat, it'll uh, pick up on the raised areas, but leave the recesses the nice shading. And I'm just doing the underside of the tank, as I said, because it should be shaded as well. You can do the whole underside if you want, or just the parts in the uh, along the edges of the tracks, but both will be uh, quite good. And they both turn out quite nicely. And that's the great thing about the Steinal Res primers, they dry really quickly. And uh, they're really easy to apply. As I said, I just did a gray primer, and then now a black primer. I repeated this process now on the other side of the tank. And that's it. So then in the end, you end up with this finished pre-shaded model. As you can see, it looks just a bit exaggerated. Now all the crevices and all the things you want to be shaded, it's just exaggerated. So now look at that, they're all nice and shaded, all nice thin lines between them and it's gonna be appreciated. Look at that. It's, you can see definitely a contrast in colors between areas you want to be darker than others. And this is a appreciated Land Raider. You can see, tons of difference in lines. And it is completely good to go. So that concludes this week's episode of Airbrush 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. And that's pre-shading in a nutshell, essentially. So 
we exaggerate the recesses. The key is to spray and have the surface, like the corner facing the airbrush spray, so that way it gets into those recesses and the crevices and stays there later. And uh, yeah, use a darker tone than the primer, prime gray, use a black, it's pretty simple. And now we're ready to pre-highlight this one because I'll be going over later eventually with a, a lighter color. So in the next episode, I will be pre-highlighting and then showing how to, uh, to then base coat the, the tank in a light color and then take advantage of that pre-highlighting and pre-shading. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for the next episode of Airbrush 101. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any more questions or if you have anything to add. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoy using your airbrush. And until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting with your airbrush. <laughs>